If you want to run longer and without training one more second than what you're currently doing and without getting injured, then stick around because I'm going to show you the easiest adjustment that I think, sync, that I think that you can make to your running to do just that, according to science, as usual. I'm gonna share with you not only what I think you should adjust, but also how much and how to practice it. And it's got nothing to do with your running form or your running shoes. Let's dive into it. Salut, c'est Safe Motions. This study from the Cardiff School of Sports, I think Cardiff is in England, from this year, reviews the biomechanical factors that can affect how much energy your running requires, which means in your running, what specific movement of your body requires how much energy from your body. That's called running economy, or how energy efficient your runs are. The higher your running economy is, the more energy saving you are. Now, we're not talking about you saving the planet or turning off the lights. A higher running economy means that you get less tired when you run. And that's exactly what we're all looking for in long distance running, because otherwise running sucks. How high your running economy is obviously depends on different factors, such as your experience, because experience will dictate how familiar you are with that sweet spot where you feel like you could run forever, but also on many different factors, such as the length of your legs, uh, your height, your body weight, your technique, your shoes, your running form. However, there is one mechanical factor that I think is much easier to control than others, and that's for any kind of runner and runners of all levels, whether you're a professional athlete or an amateur, just going from maybe couch potato to your first 5K. According to Cardiff, you can increase your running economy by shortening your preferred stride length by 3% for advanced runners or 8% for intermediate beginning runners. The stride length is how long each step you take is. In other words, at a given speed, shorter steps are less tiring than longer steps, as long as you stay within 3% for advanced runners or 8% for beginners. Simple enough, right? Well, how do you measure 3% of your stride length? Here's the trick. Let's do a quick talk about stride length and cadence. Your speed is the number of steps that you take per minute times the length of each step that you make. So your running speed is stride length times cadence. There's a ton more details and videos about cadence on my channel if you need to learn more about this. So at a fixed speed, meaning we don't change the speed, if we want to reduce the stride length by 3%, we just need to increase the cadence by 3%. For example, if your running cadence is 170 steps per minute, make it 175 steps per minute. As an added bonus, and we talked about it plenty on this channel, increasing your running cadence also reduces your risk of injuries, period. And since we know from statistics that 50% of runners, of us, will get injured this year. Let's try and stay on the right side of the 50%, the one that doesn't get injured. So in practice, if you're a beginner runner and you have a step rate of around 170 steps per minute, increase your running cadence by five steps, just five steps per minute to 175 steps per minute. That's all you need to do. For that, if you don't have a fancy watch, then you can use a metronome on your phone, like this very annoying one. Does that make sense? Little tip, if you're having trouble adjusting your legs to the right timing, then you can use your arms to do that. The legs will almost always adapt to the arms beat. So if your legs run too slow, just make your arms move faster. I'll have a more detailed video about this later. Now, to be fair to the study, there are plenty of other factors that influence your running fatigue, such as pushing the floor at the right angle, swinging your arms in a steady and symmetrical way, or obviously running with uh, light shoes that have a solid grip on the floor. But more interestingly, the study notes that most of the factors that modify the running economy happen at the moment that your back foot pushes off of the floor. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you want to be a more efficient runner, you should strengthen all the push-off muscles, not the glutes. They're not a push-off muscle. You've learned that in the last video. It's the soleus. You knew that. I'm sure you did. So I'll see you in the soleus video. A bientôt.